All right, there we go. All right, everybody, good morning. Hey, happy Saturday, folks. Uh, we've had a crazy amount of uh, stuff going on over the last bunch of weeks here. I've been traveling for master's classes. We're in the thick of the thick of the thick of summer painting, and it is go time, folks. People are taking vacations. Uh, we're out there doing good stuff for our clients, and it is a ton of fun so far. So this is the Ask a Painter live show. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my almost three decades of experience in this trades as a craftsperson uh, and a trades business entrepreneur to answer any questions. And again, I don't have all the answers, but we have data, we have theory, and we have all these awesome people watching as well that can also collaborate and help solve these things. So later on in the show, we're going to get to any of the questions you guys want. I've been getting a lot of a lot of requests for what are master's classes. So I travel the country and I present things called master's classes, which are kind of like lectures, except it's way less of me talking and just standing up there and saying, this is what we do. It's more of an interactive sort of thing. We get, um, it's kind of a dog whistle to a bunch of like pro progressive, aggressive thinkers in our industry. We gather up and based on state's limitations, I think we can gather anywhere between 10 and 30 people in most places right now. We get together in a room, I present a problem. And then we talk about the friction points in that problem and we use first principles reasoning to solve that problem. I present a whole bunch of data, a whole bunch of experience from my company in real time. I am an open book contractor. Uh, I want to collaborate. I want to legitimately professionalize this trade and I want to give people the information that I wish I had 10 or 15 years ago when I was trying to solve all these problems on my own. I, all the problems that you have right now, estimating, scheduling, finding people, all those things have been solved by somebody somewhere. I can present a case on how I solved a lot of those things. And then I can get feedback from you guys on how you did it. And then we can put the info out there to the other people. So today I'm actually going to do a quick overview of a lot of the master's classes. And I'm going to show you some of the most interesting slides from each of the master's classes. So before we dive in, <clears throat> IG people, love my IG people, you are going to want to eventually go to Facebook because I am going to be screen sharing some awesome data. We got graphs. We got all sorts of fun stuff going on there. So excuse me. I got to clear my throat real quick. Super impolite. <coughs> and then we're going to get after it. So PCA, folks, Painting Contractors Association. Um, I was elected vice chair of the board of directors. My good friend, Jason Paris is the chairperson. Uh, over the next couple of years, we have the ability to take on an initiative. Uh, just like every sort of, you know, when a regime comes in, when a leader comes in, they take on some sort of initiative, they champion in it, they get uh, support from the board, they get support from the executive director and then the membership of the group. Our initiative is professionalizing the industry. And yes, I know it can sound dry, it can sound boring, but professionalization is a loaded word. Everything, all the friction points that you experience in your business right now, I can't find people. I don't know what a proven process is. There's no uh, standard operating procedures. There's no systems. There's no processes. How do you schedule? Uh, how do you get leads? How do you estimate? How do you know how much money should be spent on what things of overhead? Every single one of these things is answered if you professionalize your business. Professionalizing your business is a is a simple process really uh, with, a, with a lot of grit and a little bit of information. You go through a bunch of steps to do a whole bunch of sort of seemingly unimportant, unsexy things like making job descriptions and deliverables and having a reporting system and job costing. But at the end of that, what you get is pure clean data. Most trades businesses run on feelings. Feelings aren't bad. We have them for a reason. They're indicators of something. But if you start making financial decisions based on feelings and no data, you are going to be in a world of hurt. And so all the pain points you're experiencing right now are normally because there's not enough data to bolster the feelings. The mission of my life and all these master's classes is to combine data and the feelings. Here's your feeling. Here's some data to either prove or disprove it. Now go forth and make an informed decision. This is what the Painting Contractors Association is about. Jason Paris and I have a couple years to enact this. We want this to be effective. We legitimately believe that through a series of professionalization, simple things that all real businesses do all over the country, this isn't innovative. This isn't something we came up that nobody else is doing. This is information from all industries that we've gathered that we believe will legitimately help this industry and all the trades. 
If you're interested in that, if you're interested in hanging out with more people like me, talking with more people like me, uh, talking with people like Jason Paris, the PCA is the place for you. It is a lighthouse in the ocean, kind of beckoning to the people out there looking for answers and other people, like-minded people who legitimately want to innovate the trades, reform, and just do good by all the humans around us. And it's going to be a lot of fun, folks. So today we're going to jump in. Uh, if you're interested in the PCA, I have a link in there uh, in the show notes for this thing on Facebook and uh, for membership and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to jump into the master's classes. I'm going to give you a preview of, of what I've been doing, how we do it, and then share some of the most interesting slides for each one. And of course, if you guys have any questions, um, definitely type them in the comments and we'll do, I mean, if you want to talk about oil primer, if you want to talk about how to paint vinyl siding, let's go into that too. But we're going to jump into some, uh, some sharing here too. So Chris Mole, good morning, my friend, Peter Belfast from Australia. Uh, awesome. Good to talk to you. Ah, Angel, Mongia, uh, Cynthia Reynolds, good morning. Always interested info. All right, well, here we go, folks. Uh, I am gonna start a series of screen shares here for you. So this is, let me get back to my topics. If you're watching on Facebook, I have a basic menu of master's classes. So what typically happens is somebody says, hey, I would love to have you and the master's classes and a whole bunch of other contractors come to my area. How do we do it? It starts with a raising of a hand. You contact me, you contact the PCA, and we have a process to get one of those in your area. We usually find an underwriter, we find a place to hold it, and we work logistics from there. All you got to do is raise your hand and we'll take care of that. Uh, gathering people is normally the most difficult part there. It takes a lot of reaching out to local contractors there. Um, it's tough to talk a painter into taking a Thursday or a Friday off in June or July when it's sunny. But I can guarantee you this, there has never been a human who spent a day with me and other like-minded contractors who didn't walk away saying, this is the best thing I ever could have done with my day. I've even had one person uh, uh, say that it was the cheapest day of therapy they've ever had. Again, because we're presenting tons of data and other things, and it helps put those crazy thoughts in your head to rest, or it proves them. So either way, but this is a this is a topic list of all the master's classes I have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have we have about 11 master's classes, give or take, and they range everything from uh, the most popular ones uh, are estimating. Obviously, I show you the theory of how to come up with an estimate. This is a sort of a teach a man to fish sort of thing. Instead of giving you a price, I show you how to come up with price so you can come up with price anytime you want. Uh, Modern Apprenticeship. This is a beautiful two part series where I show you like right now, right now, think to yourself, what is the biggest problem in our industry? Most people will say there's no good people out there. Nobody wants to work. Kids these days, they're lazy, right? In my company, we live in a farm town of 8,000 people. We can find as many people as we want uh, in order to fill this company up with good people. We, we find a we find a interesting way to, find, uh, to get them. We train them in an interesting way and we try to keep them in an interesting way. Um, we have solved the labor crisis here. And I present a whole day's worth of data and experience from my company at this very moment, what we're doing right now uh, in order to do that. So the biggest problem, this unsolvable problem, this there are no good people out there. I have some of the most interesting data to show you about that. And let's get into that. I'm going to get rid of my screen share on topics and I will share with you. All right, where is the... Ooh, let's get... Let's hide that one out of there. All right, so if you're watching on Facebook, I even quantify, and, and this is the whole thing too. People think it's impossible to find people <clears throat> and then to trade people, train people. I actually broke down what, <clears throat> excuse me, I broke down what it costs to actually train somebody from the recruiting process, how much time it takes me to actually create an ad, put it out there and uh, get results from it and how much time it takes. We have a dedicated trainer in my company, in our training facility. I can show you now, yes, you may not have a dedicated trainer. You may not have a training facility, but I've been doing this for 14 years without a trainer and without a, uh, without a facility. And I'll show you exactly how that's done. I break it down to the dollar how much it costs to find a decent human being, bring them in your company and make them a competent painter. So if you're on Facebook right now, you're seeing that slide. That is something I go into in depth in these master's classes. 
not only this, like here's the information. What I love about this is that everybody starts raising their hand. What about this? What about this? Here's an objection. Here's something I feel. Here's something I do. Good. Let's all discuss because every part of the country is different. But I will tell you this. If you think your part of the country is different, this is the common pushback. Yeah, Nick, but you do this. And I say that is BS. We have all the data that we need right here. I have some of the, ro the most robust data to disprove that we are actually in a labor crisis right now. Uh, if you want to spend a day with me going over it and discussing and arguing, which I love to do, there's nothing better than a good argument. That's how I learn. Uh, that's what we can do in one of my master's classes. So let's get rid of, let's get rid of the modern apprenticeship. I love that modern apprenticeship one. That is such a fun one. Do, 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 do. All right. So modern apprenticeship one, let's go into modern apprenticeship two here. Let's find my slide. Do, 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 do. Where are you, Mr. Modern apprenticeship slide? Oops. Let's hide those things here. All right, sorry folks, I, my screen is very, very small right now as I'm trying to, uh, I got a queue here of slides coming up. Let's find all these guys here. All right. All right, so let's go back through to, sorry folks, just getting my stuff in order here. All right, so let's move on to another master's class here, estimating. So this is my probably second most popular master's class here. I'll share this thing here. Uh, I go through again, this is what, what everybody wants to know is what do you charge for X? I can actually show you how you come up with X. Uh, we can do it a whole bunch of ways. We go through a whole bunch of thought experiments. We even break it down to, you know, what should a paint business owner make every year? Things like that. Very simple stuff. Um, this slide that I'm showing you right here is a simple way of estimating where I can I can estimate. So a, a theory in my company, a thesis in my company is that we want to show up on site. We have a tablet and we want to uh, go through the entire house and somewhere within 20 minutes and 45 minutes, we want to have you a completed estimate on site print it out on paper that we can hand to you and walk through with you because that's when all the questions come up in these things. So the, the screen share that I'm showing you is an example of one of my simple estimate things uh, where I can walk through a house and estimate ceiling, wall, trim, cabinets, closets, popcorn removal, and any repairs that need to be done in about 40 minutes. Get a complete estimate made up, go out to my van, print it out on paper, walk through. Every room has six or seven options. It's a big matrix of prices, and we present it to the client in this beautiful one-page form that's easily consumable. Now, this is, there's a lot behind that, right? Because there's a whole bunch of theory of where that price comes from. One of the most interesting things that we do in the uh, estimating master's class is we do one of the coolest experiments ever. Uh, I have every, so market rate, right? So you can do it based on your charge rate. You can say, I charge $65 an hour, which is very different from your actual production rate. You can say, well, here's my production rates. I can do, uh, uh, you know, 200 square feet of wall an hour, or I charge $2 and 13 cents a square foot. But the problem is that's only internal. It's not connected to an outside market rate. Right now, paint, the price of paint is going up because there is a demand for it because there is a shortage of it. It's the supply and demand thing. If there's a low supply, demand will normally go up and price will rise with it. So how can you apply that to your own painting company? If you're a house painter, in May in Minnesota, you're probably booked up for the year already. And somebody calls you to stay in a deck before a graduation party the first week in June. That is a very high demand, very low supply of painters to do it so you can actually charge more. I actually help you guys come up with some market rate theory in your actual market. We, we take all the contractors in the room and we estimate the same thing, the same project. We come up with material, labor, how many hours a job is gonna take. I anonymize the data. At the end of the presentation, I actually present to you, here is the highest price that somebody charged, here's the lowest price, here's the average price of this project. You will never be able to get this data anywhere else. There is not a place you can go and ask, 
20 to 100 contractors. What do you charge for this? Get all the data, all the number crunching, and then compare it to your own company. I present you with actual market data from your own market at the end of that estimating master's class. So that is something that is so fun to do. I have this data from markets all across the country, and it is wild. It is absolutely wild. It's proof. It's proof that um, we are largely unprofessionalized. We have people charging four times either higher or lower what other people do. We have people taking four to five times more than other people. But the interesting thing is the average price, always pretty accurate. And it's pretty cool. It's a great conversation point. So, all right, let's get rid of... Let's get rid of that one. All right, so another master's class here. Let's talk about some do, 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 industry myths. So this is a brand new one for this year. Uh, I go through a whole bunch of, so the problem in my company is that there's a whole bunch of knee-jerk reactions out there, right? There's no good people out there, right? And everybody just says it and everybody agrees. You're right. The reason I can't succeed right now, the reason I can't find anybody because there's just no good people out there, legitimately, there have never been more humans on this planet. The millennials right now are all between 18 and 20 to 40. They are all in the demo that we are looking for, for employees, apprentices, craftspeople, things like that. The millennial generation is as big as the baby boomers generation. The baby boomers were called the baby boomers because there were so dang many of them. And now we have this other generation that's just as big. There have never been more humans on this planet right now. Also, for every single person that I ask, what are you doing to find these people? What are you doing? Well, I made an ad and I put it on Craigslist. So I have checked the box. That is not putting forward effort. What I will say is we have an intentional amount of effort that we put towards finding people. We can always find as many people as we want because we have intentional effort and we do things that everybody else doesn't do. Simple things. One of the things... <laughs> Uh, interestingly enough, is you'll talk to somebody who's like, hey, we got five painters, all guys. We can't find any more good people. And I'll say, uh, how about women? Have you ever considered women? I don't know. We just don't really get many. There are 162 million people in the workforce right now in the United States. We have a chance to choose from over 162 million people. 95% of them are employed. So really, we probably are going to be looking for somebody who's already got a job. 47% of that 162 million people are women. Most painting companies and trades companies completely overlook or do not want 47% of the industry. So this is a bold statement, but if you say there's no good people out there and you do not hire women, you are a fool. You're forgoing half of the people out there. That's like taking your market. Hey, I paint in Chicago. 47% of these houses, I'm not even gonna consider painting. I don't care if they call me, I don't care if they're perfect for my demo. I'm not even going to do it. That is the silliest thing I've ever heard. So I will ask you to do some first principle reasoning and look around you and actually say, what is actually preventing me from doing this? Another industry myth, and this is a common thing uh, that I run across all the time. Uh, so again, there's no good people out there. I love to dispel this myth. There are tons of good people out there. It's never been greater. There have never been more people out there for you to get. You just got to be intentional. Another big industry myth is something I call the owner exit fallacy, which is, hey, I want to get out of the brush. I want to put down the brush and stop painting, and I want to run a business. And people have a knee-jerk reaction because they've never done the math. Well, hey, if I hire one or two people, put them in the field, and I'll go back in the office or go do estimates. And because I have two people working out in the field, I got two times the income, and then I'll run the business. The problem is, if you think about the expenses of hiring a person and how much money they can actually make for the business in a year, it's usually about 15% of their revenue generation. If everything goes well, if, if everything goes well and that painter does an industry average amount of painting for you a year, you may get back $15,000 in your pocket from each painter. That being said, most painters make between forty-five dollars and $60,000 a year. The owner exit fallacy proves, and I use a whole bunch of data and math to prove that basically if you want to put down a paintbrush and actually run a business to equal your income right now, you're probably going to have to have four people in the field, give or take. It's, uh, <clears throat> it seems like it doesn't make sense until you do some simple math. The slide that I have up on Facebook right now is something we go through. It's simple, airtight math, and it'll basically prove that. So again, data plus feelings. 
I hired two people. I just do the estimating now and drive around and my company's losing money like crazy. What's going on? That's a feelings-based argument. Throw some data on it and you'll know exactly why uh, you're losing money with something like that. So let's get rid of that one there. All right, next slide. All right, this is another one from uh, Industry Myths. Again, one of the new ones this year. <sighs> industry Myths, scheduling. Uh, probably the either number one or number two most question thing that I get is how do you schedule? <clears throat> it's tough, right? There's too many variables. We have us as the business owner. We have our employees showing up for work. We have the client, uh, their willingness to let us in or not. Uh, we have weather. We have uh, paint shortages all of a sudden. All these other things overlaid that how can you actually tell a client? Because our clients demand. They want to know when we're going to be in their houses. Rightly so. You want to plan this stuff out. With some simple math, we can have a very good predictive way of setting expectations and giving client updates uh, in order to schedule correctly. Now, the unsatisfying truth of this is there are too many variables and there's too many variables that are variable every day. They change every day. So there is a simple, basic, unsatisfying answer to the end of this, which is you need to put daily effort towards it and you need to be communicative with your clients. But I do overlay some math. So if you have I, the, the example I use on my screen share is you have four jobs. Job number four calls and says where I'm going to be at. I have a simple math problem that will tell you predictively if this and this and this happens, this is the day that we're going to be on their place. So if you would like to spend a, a half day or a day with me discussing the intricacies of that and how it works, how it doesn't work, how we can improve it and, and anything else, master's classes, it's all there for you. Do, 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 do. All right, let's get rid of that guy and I will share. Oh, let's go through some. <clears throat> Holly Barlow. Hey, we are coming to Minnesota. Absolutely. So uh, I'm going to go through a list of my master's classes at the ends here, uh, at the end of this thing here. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get to it. But uh, I'm going to scroll through some. Oh, man. Washington Painter. How's it going, man? On, on Instagram. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. This is absolutely awesome. Uh, Sharif, thanks for watching from Detroit. Mm, good industry friend, uh, Mr. Finch is from Detroit. Love watching his work. Oh, Phil, how's it going, man? Love Phil from Iowa. Haven't seen you in a while. Hopefully we can reconnect soon. All right, folks, let's go through. I'm going to pop up a list of, let's get rid of this guy here. All right, there is a link uh, in this show notes right here uh, to attend any of these master's classes. Again, if you want to attend... There's a link there. If you want to host, all you got to do is raise your hand. Contact the PCA, contact me, and we can go set, uh, get it all set it up for you. Uh, the website, the PCA website for my events, uh, they list them as they are perfectly hard scheduled. We have a whole bunch of these, uh, maybe uh, four to six more in the works, give or take around the country. So the ones that are ready for registration are on the website. You can see the link right here. Uh, the next one I'm going to be at is actually Martinez, uh, Georgia. Uh, and that will be July 9th, uh, Friday, July 9th. That'll be awesome. So really looking forward to getting down there. I haven't got to the Southeast in a while, probably in about two or three years since the uh, Savannah um, Expo for the PCA. Um, Corey Leister, good friend Corey Leister, uh, is hosting in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, uh, July 16th. Corey's a phenomenal person. She's got an insanely beautiful training center. I love working with her, and she always gathers up some of the best people in the industry. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, John Busick, good friend of mine, uh, down in uh, in the kind of San Francisco, San Rafael area, is uh, hosting me at his awesome shop. Uh, that'll be 22nd of July. And then the week after that, uh, I believe it's the 30th of July, master's class on my home turf here in Minnesota. It's going to be awesome. I would love to see all my gathering of Minnesota painters people. Anybody from the surrounding states, I would love to see you here. There's nothing better than I like than presenting on my home turf, seeing my people uh, and, and getting out there and, uh, you know, pressing the flesh with those people there. Uh, we also have Surf Prep. The good people at Surf Prep are hosting me a little later on this year. More details to follow. We're still solidifying that one. <sighs> love the Frias. Love Surf Prep. Everybody knows them. Everybody loves them. Uh, going to Nashville again to see my friends, the Kuipers. They're going to be hosting me again, so I cannot wait for that again. That is going to be a wonderful thing. Uh, and then, yeah, more to follow, folks. There's uh, there's lots of things in the works. Uh, we're circling around something very special, too, which is another Brazil trip, uh, which would be great. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that uh, 
uh, with global pandemic and everything, that everything's going to be okay and doing some logistics. And that will be an absolute blast if we can, uh, if we can line that up again. So, all right, folks, let's see what else we got here on Facebook. Todd Schultz, how's it going, man? Tony Joseph, how are you? Dave Pine, oh my God, so happy I got to meet Dave Pine uh, in the Boston area. Uh, happy Saturday. Can't say enough thing about your master's classes. Ask a painter is fire inside me. I feel like I found my people. Yeah, that is the most common statement when people get together through PCA functions or master's classes. But Dave, it's been so fun to watch you. Um, and thank you so much for the merch. Listen, <clears throat> Dave Pine came with an entire gift package for my family. He knows that, you know, when I go do these master's classes, people bring me all sorts of merch. I bring all the ask a painter stuff and we exchange, we do stuff. The first thing that happens when I get home, my van pulls up early Saturday morning when I fly in. My family flies out to the van, we get the suitcase and the kids tear open the suitcase and look for all the hats and the shirts and they all, we got this whole fashion show going on. Everybody's got everything on, uh, the stickers, the mugs and everything. And we absolutely love it. And uh, Dave Pine has some of the best merch in the industry, aesthetically pleasing, good clothes. He even packed something for my wife because he knows that I bring this stuff home to my family. So Dave, you're the man. I absolutely love that. And it was great to talk to you there too. So uh, v Prentice, tons of people want to work. Yes. Dave Campbell, off to work. Hey, good luck, man. Have a good productive day here. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> McCall, uh, my best workers are female. We even offer child assistance for single moms. We can track the workforce. I like that a lot. We need to be innovative. Uh, it's uh, This is not my father's trades like it was 30 years ago. Uh, Nick, did I just miss the master's class info? Are you talking locations? Yes, Jake, there is a link uh, in the show notes of this show. You can look there. And if you guys, again, listen, it's Ask a Painter. You guys know you can reach me anytime you want. You can DM me. You can email me. If you got any questions about any of this stuff, I am always happy to see this stuff. Ruben, good morning, my friend. PJ, see you in Mechanicsburg. I am really looking forward to that. Corey Leister does not disappoint. She actually had her parents... Her, no, she didn't. I don't know if she had them. Her parents decided voluntarily to make this awesome local sort of like um, Pennsylvania Dutch dish where you stuff a stomach full of potatoes and seasonings and meat and all this other stuff and bring it there. And it is right up my alley. Uh, I We eat a lot of wild game meat and stuff up here. We're very adventurous eaters. So Corey knows me very well. That was awesome. Her parents got involved. Uh, her brother uh, there as well, uh, brother-in-law. And it was just an amazing, amazing thing. So, uh, all right, folks, let's see what else we got here. Clean out my screens. This is uh, I, what you guys can't see is I got this insanely messy queue down below of all these crazy screens that I want to share and things like that. And I'm just making sure I go through and did not and did not miss anything. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, Sharif, do you charge on Instagram? Do you char uh, change wall plugs and light switches as a painter? I do not. That is a uh, uh, that is actually a uh, uh, either a homeowner thing because homeowners are allowed to do it, or an electrician thing. Uh, too much liability for painters to start messing around. Um, yeah, too much liability for painters to mess around with electrical stuff. We do not do that. So we know our we know our lane very well. So, all right, Ted Sharp, always love to learn from the masters. Yeah, and you know what? So interestingly enough, you know, we just passed the five year anniversary of Ask a Painter, and uh, it's been great to sort of reminisce. A lot of people have been in contact, and uh, what's really interesting is that you know it's the whole tip of the iceberg thing, which is there are. The whole bunch of people that interact regularly with me with the show and things like that but sometimes i forget that uh it goes much deeper than that there's a lot of people who never like it and never comment and never share it and never do anything else but they're watching and they take stuff back years later they'll send me an email and say hey man listen i started watching at this time these are the things that i got from this these are the things that are still confusing to me could you explain more of this and we interact and we all learn from everybody else. So it's a really interesting experience. Uh, this is way more collaborative than people think. This is not me lecturing about you must do this, you must not do that, things like that. This is a very, very, um, yeah, this is a very, very sort of like collaborative effort on our part. So uh, Mr. ZK, Mr. Zach Kenny, my good friend watching on Instagram, love that guy. So, all right, folks, it is about time for me to hop onto some family time here. 
probably go weed in my garden, rip around on the dirt bikes with the kids and uh, enjoy this weekend. We're finally going to get some rain here in Minnesota. Uh, we are actually in kind of a dust bowl -y sort of thing. We, we need some rain, so that'll be nice for the farmers, not for the painters. But uh, I do appreciate everybody watching. If you guys are interested in more of stuff like this, you know where to find it. The PCA, the Painting Contractors Association, link to join there. If you pay your membership dues to the PCA, you're not guaranteed to be a great contractor or get rid of any stress in your life. If you pay your dues and interact with the people in the PCA, yes, there's a very high likelihood that all the friction points you're feeling right now will probably go away in the near future, given the information and the grit that you're willing to put forward. So I look forward to interacting with you guys. There's a whole bunch of in-person events that are coming uh, that are coming um, that are coming shortly. Uh, just buckle up. The master's classes are great. I love traveling around and seeing everybody. And uh, the next big couple in-person events are coming, the PCA Residential Forum, along with the Expo. And we're gonna do this again, just like we did with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all together. So, uh, oh, Mike Chavez, enjoy your weekend. Sorry to miss the content, but we'll connect about joining you in San Rafael. I would love that. Also, not a bad place to connect, San Rafael, California. <laughs> my One of my good industry friends, one of the guys who put their arms around me the earliest, in this entire industry is Dan Ross, elder statesman, master everything. One of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. Also San Rafael, him and his wife and his family had us over, my family, when we were doing our California road trip last year. And we sat in their pool, uh, we sat in their backyard, we grilled, we talked. That's the openness and the, and the sharing sort of mentality in this industry that some guy who should never give time to a person like me does willingly. And when he finds out I'm in California, he invites me over to the house for an entire day of family fun. So that's the heartwarming stuff that happens in this trade when you reach out to other people, folks. So have a good weekend, everybody. I enjoy this more than any of you know, and uh, look forward to seeing you next week.